Patrick Cook here. Thanks for returning uh, as we continue with our Mandelbulb 3D tutorial series. Uh, now, in the last session, I was talking about your uh, uh, up to six light sources, and uh, and we, we we had we know we can do global, we can do positional, we can do light map. And when I was talking about light, light map, I promised that I would come back down here and um, uh, explain how to utilize this feature, use a map for diffuse color. So that's what we're going to do in this session. Now I'm going to click that on. I've got my light sources up here turned off. I'm pretty much back the way I was a couple sessions ago. Uh, I've restored my colors. We don't have any of those crazy colors that we were talking about. So I'm basically back here in a kind of a um, kind of a an, an, a, 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 a a 3D uh, graphical environment that I'm working with that I'm going to pretty much stay with as we proceed here building our Mandelbulb 3D animation. I'm going to click this use a map source for diffuse color. I'm going to click that on. Now, you can do some really, really wonderful stuff with this mapping. You can also get yourself in trouble with it when it comes to animation. And I'll explain both of those what I just said. Uh, now, uh, with this up down, I can actually choose from the maps available in the installation folder of the Mandelbulb uh, uh, application, or somewhere else if I had chosen to change that with the, with the preferences up here. Now we talked about that way, way early, all right? So I can actually have a location for where these maps are. Let me show you where these, let me show you these maps. Now, this is the, this is the installation folder of the Mandelbulb. This is where I chose to put it. All right, and we see here M3 maps. Now, these are PNG files. Let me just double click on it, you see. That's a PNG graphic, all right? And they're given numbers, one, two, three, so on and so forth, and uh, 1,059 and so on and so forth. All of these maps came with the Mandelbulb software when it was, uh, when it was installed. I have not created any additional maps at this time, all right? so. I'm gonna, so just remember now, this is in the M3 maps subfolder under where uh, you place the Mandelbulb uh, uh, application and uh, unzipped it. We'll just lower that for now. So as I go through here, I am actually selecting a map number. Now this mapping, is mapping the diffuse color onto the scene or the Mandelbulb object. It's mapping. It's mapping the diffuse color of that map onto the uh, onto the scene. All right. So if uh, if I just come back here, uh, let's go find map number ten. Map number 10, right there. So it is mapping the, in, uh, the diffuse color uh, onto the, man the Mandelbulb uh, object uh, per this um, map. I'm going to go to map number 11. All right, so there's 11. Okay, do some pretty cool stuff. Now you'll notice here that if I keep clicking up here, Map not found. Map not found. That's because uh, 17, for whatever reason, doesn't exist. Here's 15. 16 is gone. But here's map 939. So 
So I can come in here and type in 939. So now this map has been used for my diverse colors, uh, diffuse colors on my Mandelbulb uh, scene. Let's, uh, this should, should be interesting. 1038. Come in here. 1038. So there is a map of the diffuse colors onto my scene. You see here that I have the reds. All right, there's reds in there, and then I've got greens around here. The greens are down in here. There's some green right in here. So what I've done with this feature is I have, I have, I have used a map. Uh, I have used a, a, a an image structure to to place the colors of the map onto the scene. Now, I can do a couple things with this mapping. I can move the map. Matter of fact, tell you what, let's find a different map that will better illustrate. I'm going to go back to map number one, two. Oh, okay. This map, yeah, trying to find something where I can show. Oh, maybe this one. Yeah, okay. This, this, this will be a good map to illustrate the offset. Now, I can take this map and I can offset it on the x-axis, you see? I'm offsetting it on the x-axis, x. Put that back. I'm gonna offset the map on the y-axis now. All right. Now I'm going to, I'm gonna rotate the map, I'll rotate it. All right. All right, and I'm going to do one other thing here is I'm actually going to change the scale of the map. I'm going to increase the map size. I'm going to reduce the size. So I can do some pretty crazy stuff with this mapping. Now, to be a little bit more realistic when it comes to this particular scene where I have a, uh, I have a uh, vista. All right, <laughs> I might want to do something like uh, like this scene right here, or or this map. <clears throat> I'm trying to find a map here where I can kind of show you. Um, well, let's. Uh, uh, well, let's uh, all right. Let's stick with this one right here. So, if I modify the x-axis, all right, not much has happened because the map, as you can see, uh, matter of fact, let's go find map number two right here. That's my map. You notice here that the map along the x axis along the i a uh, y axis i have a change of the color but the x axis i don't the color is consistent across the x so that's why if i modify the x axis nothing happens but if i modify the y axis because i have color variations on the y axis i'm getting this effect here the offset is actually on the y-axis. And of course, I can do the rotation too. All right. So that's kind of an illustrates how the your x-axis and the y-axis and the rotation. There is no z-axis on these maps. All right. And I can do the scale. So I can get some pretty interesting stuff out of here. All right. Now, when we come back in the next session, we're going to talk about this a little bit more, and I'm going to show you how these maps can get you into a jam when it comes to 
animation. I'll see you in the next uh, next session.